So we are getting ready to do lesson number three for our um, Sketchpad Pro, or not Pro, Sketchpad. Um, I am starting with a document that is a grid this time. So under, under your new um, plus mark there, um, you want to you want to select grid and I'm doing this one because we are going to jump into type today and I want to make sure that you understand that we do have the grid here to help us organize things and to make them look nice and neat. So something different. So we are um, going to jump into the text tool and if you notice just below that it has um, a type of font. Um, if you click on your arrow you're going to see that there are a lot of different fonts. A lot, a lot, a lot. You have a great selection in this program. Let me just tell you a little quick bit about fonts. Number one, don't put every font that exists in one document. It's an overload and hard to read and people will not look at your stuff. Yeah, there's cool stuff there. Figure out it in design sense, okay? Don't just throw stuff. Um, I recommend, and it's recommended for good design to just stick with a couple of fonts. Don't use, um, let me let me introduce real fast what types of fonts there are, all right? If you look on my screen here, we have this one right here. This is Open Sans, is a sans serif font. It means it doesn't have any feet to it. It's just a nice straight letter. There's nothing fancy. This is a great font to use for bodies of type. So if you're typing out a paragraph, um, that type of thing, good thing to use. Another, so you see there's a, there's a lot of different types of sans serif, all right? Um, Meriwether is a good example of serif font. Serif has the feet, so you can see it's a little bit fancier. Um, people can read serif fonts quicker. It's been proven. It's because most of the textbooks throughout time have been printed in this type of a font, and I think that our eyes have grown accustomed to it. So um, I did teach typography for a number of years at a, co a local college here in Ohio. So um, actually it was in Columbus, but uh, I'm not going to go there. It's not a, it's not a pump up for that college, but um, it was a good college. Um, so I'm going to move on. Let's go down here. This one right here is a uh, decorative font. So decorative fonts come in all different shapes and sizes. There's, um, this one is a, let me see if I can move up here. Hold on just a second. I'm just going to, whoa, not do that. Auto. I'm going to go back here. Sorry, trying something new. All right. Um, we have script. So Arizona is a script font. And it looks like cursive writing. That's how you can kind of figure that out. Um, Cody Star is a decorative. So decorative comes in many shapes and sizes. This is Emily's Candy is a serif. See the fancy feet on it? But it also kind of qual qualifies for a decorative font. All right. Now that you know some of these, and hopefully you can understand and choose wisely, <laughs> um, your, your um, decorative fonts are really good to use for headlines. Um, but if you're, if you're creating a body of type, let's say a paragraph, if you're making posters or making flyers, use something that people can read. So I would stick with a sans serif or a serif font for, those, for that information. If you get too much in there, it's just going to be a nightmare. And nobody's want, want, does, nobody is going to want to read it. So, All right. Now let's pick something. I'm going to grab Great Vibes and... All you're going to do for Great Vibes is click. It sticks in that font and you can type something. Huh, I didn't type that. It just automatically came in that way. So we can say, um, what do we want to say? Oh, let's get 2020 over. <laughs> I think we can all agree. 2020 has been a bit nuts. So, um, so you can see that there's 
there's some spacing. If you you saw it, I just grabbed that that uh, left arrow, and that will throw your type down to um, two lines or stretch it out into one line. That does not distort your text. All that's doing is just moving that that text box. So if you grab a corner and pull, you if you pull it below, you notice that there's the crosshairs. If you pull it below, you're flipping your text. Good to know because you might need that effect for something. And um, you can see that it, it, it adjusts as well. So there's my smaller text box. If you put your cursor just outside that corner, um, it turns into the rounded double arrow, which is our rotation tool. So you can always click on that and rotate. And I'm going to make this a little bigger. Now, here's a trick. If you want to keep your text, let's, let me show you this. So let's say I want it to stay like that, but I want it bigger. So you can go down here and you can, um, if you just hold your shift button down, click on a corner, you can actually make your type bigger. So there's uh, something you can do. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Remember, you can always undo, and I'm going to use my type or my move tool and move this around a little bit. Um, you have a line height, so if let's let's get let me get some other text here. So let's see what font we want to use. I'm going to use Oswald and say. upon a time there was a teacher who wanted to travel the world she was whoops she was happy to find out at her school Allow her to take some of her students. Is it the Louvre in Paris? That would be a really awesome trip. <laughs> All right, so um, so here's a little paragraph. And what you can do is you can, I just triple clicked, put my cursor in there and triple clicked with my mouse. Um, and, or you can click and drag over it. You can go down here to line height, letter spacing, word spacing. Um, so line height, just, it, it will give you more space between your text. You want to watch doing that. Sometimes I see people who want to do this. And I think it stems from papers that you have to do for other teachers. Um, the problem with spacing things like this, yes, it fills up your page, but everything reads separate. Make sure that your, your text can read as a paragraph. And that's your point, right? Especially if you're making a poster or something. You don't want to do that. If you're writing a paper for somebody else, you might want to do that. <laughs> Um, here's your letter spacing, which just breeze, makes your letters spaced out from one another in each line. And then you have, let's see if I can scroll up. I've got some things that are word spacing. Hold on a minute. Just have something that's in the way. word spacing. There we go. So you can get more space in between each word. So 
there is that information. So you also had over here is a line left, which puts everything lined up on the left-hand side. You have center alignment, right alignment, and justify. Justify, just make sure that it's equal on both sides of your page. Bold italics, underline, strike through. I'm not sure what you need strike through for. Haven't used that a whole lot, but hey, it's there. Um, one thing I will tell you, so if you are creating something, um, just a word to the wise, again, don't use like five or six different fonts because it's confusing to the reader. But what you can do is use font families. What is a font family? You ask, let me tell you. A font family is something like this, where you can select make it like this. So double click, I'm going to grab. So I'm going to say once I want this to stand out. Um, well, let's see. This. Whoops. How about this? All right. So if I want something to stand out, um, I'm sticking with Oswald, which is what this paragraph was. Maybe it's an italic. Maybe it's a bold. Should you um, highlight it? Not necessarily. Hey, look what I'm doing. You can take this stuff off the page too. Hello. You can have some fun with it. What if I had this font? By the way, you're going to do a fill. So I'm going to make this, this um, an orangish color here. I am going to go into, remember, our blending modes from the last lesson, last couple of lessons. If I go here, what happens if I do difference? What happens if I say hard light? What happens if I say exclusion? You can still read your paragraph, although that's a little bit challenging on that one. You can do lighten. Ooh, it totally disappeared. There's a lot of really cool stuff you guys can do. You just have to play around with this stuff um, and, and kind of see what it does. You know, maybe you have this giant shape in the back. I'm going to get back to something that was cool here. A little bit of difference. All right. So what if you are working on um, something, let's say, we're just going to do capital letters and say yes. And I'm going to make it huge. And You can see here, how cool is this? So you can click on your yes, you can move it around, you can take it off the page. Maybe that's just part of your decoration for your page. Um, use your, I did tell you I was using the graph for a reason. Um, you can use this to line things up. So put your baseline of your type, which is the, the bottom line that it all sets on, down. Look at that, it looks, it looks pretty cool. All right. So um, I did tell you there would be more stuff. I'm going to click off the page. You can click off the page in the gray space to kind of un so deselect what you are working on so it doesn't get um, affected. I'm going to jump quickly over to clip art. A word to the wise. Don't ever do it with the clip art either. Um, it is, is overdone a lot. So there's a lot of fun things. Look at this up at the top here. Load your own image. You can make your own clip art. Add it in. Why not? So let's see. What can I put in here with 2020? Let's see if we can find something crazy. Hmm. wonder if there's a mask. Just joking. All right. As you can see, there's black and white line art. Um, there is color. There, There's a bunch of stuff. Let me see. If, and you can find things. So I'm just going to type out art. Let's see what is art related since that is what we're focused on. That is not really good art stuff. I guess I need to make my own and add it, huh? Yeah, I'm not feeling it. All right. I'm just going to grab something random then. How about paint? Fun. Mm, that was strange. All right. We'll just let that go. Let's grab, um, I'm just going to grab the cow. I have a lot of students who are 
farming families. So they, they'll appreciate this. All right. Do you see what's happening here? So my cow came in. Um, he's the blending mode on him right now is overlay. That is why he's disappearing. Um, and he's kind of fitting into the letters. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this. You can also do the paint into layer. Remember, we learned that on the first lesson. So if you go here, um, actually, let me go back to the camera. Hold on just a second. Um, let's go to overlay. I'll go to normal for a second. So this is our guy. You can um, resize him, drag him down. You can flip him over. You can flip him upside down. Um, you can rotate him, whatever you need to do. Um, again, if you play around with these blending modes, you might get some really cool effects. You can, um, I'm just going to keep going in here. I'm going to grab my, my move tool. I'm selecting the one cow that I want to affect and, um, there's color effects. So you can change saturation. What is saturation, you ask? I'm glad you asked. Saturation means that it is full of color. If I decrease my saturation, I am pulling the color out. So you're going to end up, and it's kind of hard to see with this guy. Let me see if I can grab a different one to, sh to really show you what this is. Here's a cute little teddy bear. All right. So um, let me move this guy. So Mr. Teddy Bear here, under the color effects, so saturation, watch what happens. So if I pull the saturation clear to the left, it is now a black and white image. You can bring in your own photographs and you can do this to your photographs if you need a black and white photo. Cool beans, huh? All right, if you want it really popped up with saturation, if you really wanna pop those colors, crank it to the right. But most of the time, things live straight in the middle there. They have a nice, you know, so if you have something that the color isn't exactly what you want, maybe you can play around with saturation. Tint, remember that tint is you add white. If you go to the right, so you're changing all of that. I'm going to actually, let me put this guy saturation back in the middle because it's blowing everything out of proportion, okay? And temperature means it's hot or cool. So here's it cooler, there's warmer. To the right is warmer. Contrast. This is where if you have that black and white, watch this, um, and you really need a good contrasty image, maybe you're getting ready to work on charcoal, crank it over. Figure out where you can get some really good um, changes. Brightness. You would, you would play around with your brightness, your contrast, your exposure. So if I drop contrast back to the middle, you can um, check your exposure if something's overexposed, but that's a whole photograph situation. That's something completely different. All right, and then sepia makes it brown. So it makes it look like an old photograph. All right, those are your color effects. So you've also got opacity, so you can drop your opacity. Is it see-through? Now it's see-through. So you can do all of that. And that was with it on normal. So imagine if you played around with some of this other stuff. Okay, so I have basically gone over all of these tools. The one I haven't yet is crop and resize. And what that does is that crops your entire page. So let's say I just want to focus on this one area. Then I can click and drag around that one area. And double click to crop it. And now that is my new image area. I will warn you because you're working with pixels in this that if you change it too much and try to blow it up or whatever, you're going to blow your pixels out. So just be careful with this. Um, this is good if you started really big and you need to bring it in, but um, there's that. Zoom, um, if you click on the magnifying glass, you can go in here. And over on the right, you see that there's a plus and a minus, an X, and then a zoom to fit. So you can say zoom to fit so you can see it and you can zoom in, but you can also um, use some of the same techniques that I was showing you with the trackpad using your two fingers. Um, let's talk about saving this guy. So he automatically saves. So um, by the way, you can copy. So if I wanted to copy all of this, let's say I wanted to copy my um, teddy bear forgot about that. So you can right click 
if you have a mouse, you can choose um, copy. Um, you have an alignment button, a distribution button. This gets really challenging. Maybe this would be better for a uh, future um, lesson. So um, actually, I'll do that. I'll do some of these on a future lesson. How about that? I just want to get you this far. Let's talk about how in the world. So if I give you a project, you've saved it. Um, right now, it automatically saves, and it's got these crazy numbers. But if you would like to save it yourself, um, you need to go to the settings that looks like a gear up here. Click on that. Choose rename. And you can do, I'm just going to call this lesson three. And it should save it. There you go. Now it is a lesson three. All right. It, when it's time to turn it in, what you'll do is you'll choose export. You can do save. You can um, save it as a JPEG is how you want to send it to me or a PDF. All right. Um, if you want to print it. If you have a printer at home and you want to print what you're working on, you can choose that. If you're here at school with me, that this year you have to send it to me to print. So we'll work something out there. Um, if you want to share it on social media, you can choose share. And um, so I'll do a save PDF. And you can, it loads down here if you have a PC. Max it would be a little bit different, but most of you are working on a Chrome. And there's your, P, there's your PDF. So if you click on it, um, you see it right here. And um, then you can save it into your Google Drive and download it, all that good stuff. So, so if you go here, um, let's go share let's see where it's sharing to so those are all your social media tabs be careful be careful what you post in social media i know that we tell you that all the time but i'm serious don't ever put anything out there that you wouldn't want to have come back and get you down the road because even if you think you've thrown it out it's not out <laughs> be responsible all right hope that uh, made sense and um, I will um, I will post some more stuff later and um, we'll start doing some cool stuff together. So all right, have a great day. Thanks for watching.